Hey guys and welcome to another episode of Water Assassin Fishing today. Plantation Point with 5 PSI. Fishing for squid during peak tourist season. And today's adventure is going to involve a strong nor'easterly at about 11 o'clock. So conditions are perfect right now for squid. However, they will get very bad later on. We've got an incoming tide. The tide's going to be at its peak in a couple of hours. I prefer high tide fish and squid, to be honest, especially in this sort of shallow water around Plantation Point. Bearing in mind, if you are visiting this beautiful area and you are in a boat, you can't anchor here due to the regulations, and rightly so, regarding the natural seaweed at the bottom of the water where these squid like to hang out. So drifting, flicking, trawling, that kind of thing is basically what you're um, limited to. However, that is not going to stop anyone from slaying the squid. Now, the squid are prevalent through Jervis Bay. Murray's Beach is probably the probably where you catch the most squid in the area. Um, peak tourist season though, flat out. So I'm not even going to bother going there. However, if you're in a kayak or a tinny, very small tinny, you can get to Plantation Point using a little boat ramp um, that is there. A couple little flicks of the rod, try and get this squid jig moving up and down as 5 psi madly tries to dart away from what is the big yellow kayak edging towards his particular trawling zone. How are you going today, 5 PSI? Good, nice early start. <laughs> Bit late, he reckons. You're here at 5 o'clock, waiting for the sun to emerge from its evening cocoon. Here at first light, 5.30 a.m. As some of the boats start to make their merry way out of their protected bays to enjoy what is only going to be about four to five hours of somewhat easier fishing conditions before this prevailing nor'easterly picks up and knocks us all off the water. I'm going to do a few different tactics today guys. Always start out with a bit of flicking over the weed just to see if there's anything early on that's just smashing lures and then what will happen is if that's not going too well we'll naturally progress as a fish jumps out here no as five psi casts his squid jig out um, naturally we'll go to more of a trawling tactic and try and cover some ground to locate these very smart very camouflaged species of fish as mentioned previously St George's Basin and Jervis Bay very very good fishery spots well fishing spots in New South Wales possibly the best however hammered over the Christmas Easter period and for that reason if you're not out early you're going to struggle to get a spot or Get your boat or kayak into a location that you need to fish. What I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to take you off this camera for a little bit as I try and locate some of these squid. Mr. Grant Moody, who has just picked his lure out of the lure box is first to get on this morning. Now as we near up on 5 PSI as he's fighting this, uh, I think it's got a cellaropod or some stupid name like that. It is a calamari or otherwise called for those in other countries that don't understand what that means. It's a squid. As he fights his squid that he originally thought was a snag. I'm going to come up with a net. Try and give him a hand. Let's try and get these lures in first. Sun rises on his back, creating a massive silhouette over the top of the water. Okay, 
Mr. Moody is an expert nowadays on catching these squid. He's caught a few. I'm going to come up alongside him. How's it, uh, how's it going, mate? Okay, well, this is going to be an important grab. Sorry for any camera view you guys see of an upskirt, but I'm going to have to stand up to try and get this as I squeeze between him and us. Otherwise, good man, we'll get him. Oh, it's a little bloke, but it's a good little fish. And he's aiming his squid ink straight at me. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Talk us through it, mate. What, what happened just then? Well, I was literally just have to put it out to start trawling. Yep. And then it literally just felt like I was in the seaweed again. I'm like, oh, yeah, great, here we go. <laughs> Gave it a bit of a yank. Yank always does it. Yep. Started reeling in. Like, yep. She felt like a snag. Stopped for a second and um, had the head twitch. The old head twitch. Yeah. Can't oh, beat the head twitch. Hang on. I might be on here. <laughs> Well guys, the good news is squid one down and it's a very important milestone for the morning because it means that we have got the right technique going, which is a trawl. Now, Grant, like I said before, is an expert at catching these squids. Squid, he's caught a few. How many do you reckon you got of these now, mate? A couple of hundred? Yeah, a couple of hundred, but I still think it's a little bit hard to call me an expert. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna go in the bucket behind me, which nice. is full of water. And the good news about squid, isn't it? They sort of tend to hang around a similar area, so there's probably at that size, there's probably a school of them sitting here. So we'll hop around here for a bit. I'm gonna listen to the expert squid now. And I literally just changed lures to the old faithful. I love gold colored, gold colored squid jigs, especially early morning. Sort of my all rounder, and then I sort of figure it out from there. But this has got a bit of power behind it, actually, Mr. 5 psi. Bit of bend in the rod. Might be a decent well, it's hard to know because I've only got a little one to three kilo Yak Raider, the old little original. Probably said that word more times on this channel, and you're on too, mate. See behind me, guys, that silhouette across the top of the water that I'm dragging through like a kneeboarder that's just come off their ski. That's a squid. Full of ink, it's gonna have to run again. But once we, it's good size actually. Oh, be quick with the net there, wasn't I? See if I can avoid a face full of ink. Just let it sit there and do its thing. Oh, water spout. It's got two rods in the water, which isn't good. Let's get this one in as well. I think five psi's. What are you doing, mate? Are you? My knee is a holder for that. There you go, mate. I got one, one squid and one rod fouled. Feels heavy, actually. Hey. You guys through what is happening here on this beautiful morning Just enjoy this basin so yeah really good one mate a bit of a bit of go still in it so this is a lure i'm using guys as mentioned gold seems to be my favorite for some reason i love these squid candy ones too um that's the brand and this one doesn't have a sleeve on the outside of it caught many squid on that lure. You guys can see the colour with this, this pinkish sky behind me. Throw that back in. Drag over. I'll get you guys a good photo. Actually, it's good to have Mr. 5 PSI here because he'll be able to get a good photo, but as I get smashed from this camouflaged behemoth of a squid. <laughs> got squid ink everywhere. Did you see that catch? Did you guys see that catch? Years of ball sport. It's only a small one. That or I got the got the heel of the 
Paddle board, mate. Oh, I lost it. Got two squid in the bag so far. Happy days. What we're doing now is we're trawling around pretty much a peak high tide. Um, I've thrown on a diver, a hard body diver, so we can get around these right rocks of plantation point here where there is known to be snapper. And I've still got the squid jig over here on the original, the OG rod as previously described. Um, what has just happened was on this lot on this rod I was trawling a squid jig and I am looking for some ideas as to what happened from you lot out there but there was one sharp tug and thing completely gone and I had heaps of drag on it drag didn't take it just like it's something just come up and bit the lure so I don't know if you guys have ever had a shark or something take a squid jig or a really big snapper but um, 14 pound a litre got taken like that so anyway I'm gonna keep trawling along here um, being careful not to go over these rocks here at plantation point it's a bit treacherous as these seagulls it's like they swoop over the top of maybe a bait school up here and potentially we might catch a snapper what do you reckon Grant? You having a go at my lure. Guys, watch out, I've got two here, mate. Squid here everywhere. Just over here. So if you cast over here, mate, there's a heap of them just there. Oh, oh, look at it, it's got it, has it? See it there, guys? Big squid. Just don't want to take it. They're getting a bit spooked. How good is this? Sight fishing for squid. <laughs> Change colour to a green. Bit of a deeper or quicker dive. Number three for the day. It. It's the mink. Not a huge one, but still nice squids. Change to that greener colour lure. Good's that. Still got a little bit of squid left in it, a little bit of ink left in it. Number three. Another one on guys, squid number four, these majestic creatures, oh mate get rid of all your ink, good boy, nothing worse than bringing squid ink into your kayak or getting shot in the face with it, here we go number four, little calamari, Not even, I got a little, yeah, a little soft plastic on, guys, and to the bottom it went. And I've managed to catch a, one of these little scorpion fish. Oh, your favourite. Yeah. So that's going to be fun to grab a hold of. Yeah, you don't have to get a hold of it. Look at that, guys. Be fun to drop that on me, too. Well, actually, it might not be. Let's hope this um just falls off. Please swim away. There we go guys, swim off. Wow, there's some serious fish under us here. Bit of an update, we've got our four squid. Um Laurie is about to pick up and the tourists are coming out, so call it that. What do you reckon? Five PSI. So I thought I'd quickly show you as the lake from that ski boat rudely interrupts my tutorial on how to um, harvest these squid. 
They are officially called a calamari. So what we do, up under here, there's a thing that we call the comb. And what we've got to try and do is get your fingernail up underneath between where the comb and the squid hood connects. And you're just gonna pull that out. So it's gonna look like that. Get rid of the ink. Something you don't want through your boat. Put that there quickly. That's a squid sack, the squid ink sack, as you can see. So I like to keep the head. Um, head's really good for snapper and stuff, and I also love eating the tentacles, so I'm um, gonna leave that part of it. You can see here the comb is attached, just like that. This is the part we're really looking for. What we have is squid hood, and we have these wings. The wings are edible, but they are um, very tough when you cook them up, so I like to get rid of that. So there's a little crease just there between where the squid hood meets the skin. It's gonna dig your fingernail into there, and you're just gonna basically unwrap the skin from around the outside of the squid, like so. So, and you're left with your squid hood, and you're left with the wing. So you chuck the wing away. Now what I like to do from here is make sure that all that skin is off because that makes it, as mentioned before, really tough when you cook it up. So we can fast forward that little bit, which we will do. We'll pretend we've done all that. And then what I like to do is I like to always turn them inside out while I'm here. To do that, you're just going to push your finger under the very top of that squid hood. This can take a little bit of time to get the right spot. Push it through like that to turn it inside out. And then you can get rid of any of the guts or anything that might be left on the inside of the hood. And I always, I always like to keep it inside out as mentioned. And then that way I know when I'm cooking it, which way it's going to curl when I'm cooking it up. Beautiful day for it, guys. Cracker of the morning. Sun's just coming up uh, behind us over the plantation point. We've got four of these. What's